Hello, good morning. Uh, so today is the second uh, day of this uh, course. So in the last class, uh, if you remember, we talked about the symmetry aspect of uh, different objects and uh, uh, different molecules. I showed you uh, quite a number of uh, structures of different objects as well as certain molecules and we discussed about the uh, you know, symmetry aspects of those. And we, uh, we said that okay, some molecules are more symmetric than others and ultimately we also showed that there exists something called symmetry element and symmetry operation which is like symmetry operation is the you know a movement of a body by which you you know end up having an indistinguishable structure and uh, today what we are going to do we want to uh, find out uh, about the symmetry elements and symmetry operations in a bit more detail okay so <coughs> what are the symmetry elements and symmetry operations that a molecule can have. Okay. So, one can have five different symmetry elements and we can generate several symmetry operations out of those elements. Okay. We will look at that in greater detail. So, let us look at one by one. So, uh, as you can see on the screen that you can have uh, an element called identity, another element called proper axis of rotation and you can have uh, uh, mirror planes, you can have center of symmetry and you can have improper axis of rotation. So now let us look at one by one uh, what is what. First let us look at the identity of you know the element of identity. So what is it? So before going in uh, uh, going to the details of this uh, identity operation and all these things, let us also uh, see what this identity operation is denoted as. Identity operation, this is denoted as E. Okay. Now, what is this identity operation? Before going into the molecular structure, I will give you a very simple uh, you know representation of this uh, identity operation. A, suppose a person is uh, you know looking at a particular direction, then he can take several turns. So one can take a complete right turn that is by 90 degrees. So if I take a right turn, I will be looking at this direction and then if I take another right turn, then I will look at the back that is toward the board and then two more right turns I will be coming here. So uh, there is a, a, a very nice story about an uh, you know uh, United States uh, army drills. So in army drill what you have is uh, a commander will tell you to take a particular position they call it take a face. So a commander will take right face, left face. So you move by, you know, rotate by 90 degree, either on the right side and left side. So there is another turn that is by 180 degree, you actually take an about turn. So this is called an about turn. Now the commander says take an about turn and then it takes one more about turn. Now sometime in the drill, the veterans, the uh, aged uh, person who has retired from army, uh, they come and take part in the drill. So one of the veteran, he was taking part in the drill and then uh, when he heard the about turn command, he starts turning around by 180 degree. While taking this turn, he realizes that he is old enough and it is very difficult for him to take the turn in a proper way. He is twisting his leg and all these things. And he knew that the uh, and the commander will uh, ask him to turn around again. So he has to, to, to take two uh, about turns. So he realizes that, well, ultimately I will be looking at the commander at the end after taking two about turns. So if I do nothing, then also I am having the same position. So this 
idea of do nothing is actually an identity operation. So, if you look at this picture here, the person is looking at uh, us and then it takes, keeps on taking turn from here to, uh, here to here and then here to here and then here to here and then here. So, ultimately there is no change in the position of the person. So, now if I do not go through all this intermediate steps and if I come from this state to this state directly, the symmetry operation that we have performed is an identity operation. Okay. So, essentially you can figure out the identity operation means you do nothing, you keep an object as such in its position, you get obviously the identical structure because you have not done anything. So, this identity operation is also called do nothing operation okay. and this is the easiest thing and no matter what any object in this universe will have at least one symmetry element in it and that is this identity element. Okay. So, anyone can do an identity operation on any object and get an identical structure. Here it is identical, not only indistinguishable. Okay. So, that is about the identity operation E. Next, we talk about a rotational symmetry element okay. or this is also called proper axis of rotation. Uh, why it is called proper, we will talk about this, uh, uh, you know, during this course, uh, but let us uh, for the time being, uh, just call it as a proper axis of rotation. So, in the last class I showed you an example of uh, rotating a tr equilateral triangle by 120 degree and, uh, you know, getting that uh, indistinguishable structures. So, that particular you know axis is called a uh, axis of proper rotation okay. and this axis of proper rotation, this symmetry element is designated by the this C n, C subscript n. Now, in that particular example that I gave you in the last class, we had an 120 degree rotation about that particular axis, which is perpendicular to that uh, triangle. So, what is this n? Okay. So, you can see that for C n, n equals to 2, we have an 180 degree rotation. If I have an 120 degree rotation and we can get an indistinguishable object, then the you know order of this rotation, this n here that is uh, written in the C n is called the order of rotation. Okay. So, for an 120 degree rotation, uh, you have an order equals to 3. Similarly, for a 90 degree rotation, you can have an order 4. So, uh, you can easily figure out that if you have say uh, an object like uh, a square, a perfect square, you can imagine an axis through this point and this axis is perpendicular to this plane of this board, then for every 90 degree rotation, you get an indistinguishable structure because this if I mark 1, 2, 3, 4, now you can easily do because you have already seen it for the triangular case, you have another square because square is not going to be changed to a triangle, right? square will remain a square. So, when you give a 90 degree rotation, so 1 will come here, 2 will go here, 3 will go here and 4 will go here. So, ultimately what you have is this 1, 2, 3, 4, until and unless you have these numbers, you have an indistinguishable structure that is a square and this is done by a rotation by 90 degree. Okay. So, this axis, this C n here is known as C 4 and 4 comes from, from this relation 
square your n is equals to is equal to 360 degree by the angle of rotation angle of rotation right so 300 here it is this rotation is about 90 degree so the angle will be 360 degrees by 90 degrees equals to 4. So, I have an axis C4. So, you know in that way if I have a rotation of 60 degree, 30 degrees, I can find out what is the order of rotation and the uh, name of the particular uh, rotational symmetry that is C10, C8, C6 whatever okay. for a 60 degree rotation for example, it will be C 6 because 360 degree by 60 degree right. So, it will be 6 C 6. Now, <coughs> you can see that you know I can vary the uh, you know value of n. I can go from say like C 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I have not written there C 1 why not because C 1 will mean what C 1 will mean from this particular relation, it will mean that in for C 1, n equals to 1. So, n equals to 1 means I must have a situation where this angle of rotation is equals to 360 degrees. This is exactly the case what we described just some time back when we were discussing about the identity operation right. So, that is why C 1 is not mentioned anywhere because C 1 and E are the same ok. So, we have seen that ok n can be like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 depending on the uh, structure of the object or structure of the molecule in particular. So, <coughs> like for benzene I have so C 6 right. So, benzene structure is like this. So, this position of the carbon atoms and the associated hydrogens and if I assume uh, equal distribution of the pi cloud, then I can have an equivalent or indistinguishable structure for every 60 degree rotation about the axis which passes through this one right. So, every 60 degree I can have the indistinguishable structure and we can have for this one an axis C 6 and this particular is axis is C 6 right. Now, in that way I can go increasing increasing. So, can I have something which is C infinity that is the question right. So, from this uh, expression it looks like yes I can have what is the uh, <coughs> what, what is the solution that means here I have to have n equals to infinity right. So, if I equate this one to be infinity what do I have here I have extremely large number right almost like an infinity. So, in that case what I have, I have a situation like an object or a molecule which has an axis about which I can give any turn by any amount of angle and I can get an indistinguishable structure. You need an example right. So, here is one example for you carbon dioxide. Now, look at the axis if I have an axis passing through all these atoms right, this is a linear molecule right, carbon dioxide is a linear molecule and if I have an axis passing through this uh, linear molecule you know through all the atoms, then you see about this axis all around this is highly symmetric right. So, it does not matter whatever be the you know angle by which I rotate it gives an indistinguishable structure. So, in a sense I can give an infinite 
you know uh, amount of rotation before it comes back to its original you know uh, configuration correct so because i can give this infinite degrees of rotation about this axis and get indistinguishable structure this axis is known as c infinity okay now uh, we said that this uh, operation is called uh, rotation and you know uh, really we should say it is a proper rotation. Why it is proper? Because if I really can have an axis that will change this you know uh, uh, molecular configuration from one to another indistinguishable one. Okay. So, there can be really an axis there. So, there mean that means that there will be something which is not like this that is not a proper rather improper. Okay. We will come to that. It is there and we will come to that. Now, let us uh, see some more uh, example of uh, this uh, rotation. So, as I said that we can have C 2, C 3, so C 4 and so on. So, here is an example which shows you a two fold rotation okay. and the axis about which this two fold rotation is you know taken place is called two fold axis of rotation. So, here we have a molecule H 2 O. Okay. So, to you know uh, if I have an axis which bisects the angle H O H, then we can rotate the molecule about that axis right it is given here. Okay. So, this is that axis about which you can turn them. So, you see we get an indistinguishable structure by a rotation of 120 degree and another rotation by 120 degree will you know end up having the same structure back. Okay. So, this is an example of C 2. Okay. Now, let us come to three fold axis of rotation which we have already looked at in terms of ammonia. This is another example which is uh, boron trifluoride. So, here you can see that uh, one fluorine is marked by a different color than other fluorine. So, that you can actually distinguish them. Okay. So, now by 120 degree rotation you get uh, an indistinguishable structure, but you know you can actually distinguish still because you have colored one of them separately, but in a you know uh, its chemistry is not going to change because B F 3 is still B F 3 there. Okay. So, you can give uh, more rotation and you can change the positions of the fluorine atoms, but they remain indistinguishable. Though because of the color you can distinguish them here at least on the pen and paper. Now, we have been talking about only one particular axis with about which I can have a proper axis of rotation. Now, uh, it is not necessary that in a particular molecule we have only one type of axis of rotation. Okay. So, here is one example when you talk about a trigonal planar molecule. Okay. So, say this is a boron trifluoride. Okay. So, all the you know atoms are in the same plane. So, it is a trigonal planar. Now, in the you know last page we have seen that uh, there is an C 3 axis right about which you can uh, have uh, 120 degree rotation and you can get the identical structure. But is that all? No. Here you see that I can imagine an axis which is right here which passes through one fluorine and one boron that you know uh, particular axis you can have uh, an 120 degree rotation about that particular axis. So, you can get an indistinguishable structure. So, you have three boron fluoride bond right. So, this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3. So, you can have the same type of axis same type of C 2 axis through each of this boron fluoride bonds. So, you can essentially have three C 2 axis for this molecule and you can have one C 3 axis. Okay. Now, 
we will also see that this C 3 is an element. Now, when you operate this C 3 consecutively, you can get indistinguishable structures. So, you can have C 3 followed by uh, another C 3 and then another C 3 and you can keep going until unless you get an identical structure. So, so if you you know uh, do two successive uh, C 3s, then you have something called C 3 square. We will talk about these things much later and similarly you add one more C 3 into this and you can have C 3 3, which again is nothing but the identity operation, right. We have already discussed that. So, in this particular uh, case, what we learnt is that a molecule may have more than you know one uh, type of proper axis of rotation and here particularly we see that the molecule has C 3 as well as C 2 and it is also you know not necessary that this uh, C 3 and C 2 that is two different uh, you know axis of symmetry they will be uh, coinciding. Okay. So, they can have uh, they can be at uh, you know different plane and uh, you know different directions okay. or you can have uh, the you know two different axes in the same uh, or, you know uh, coinciding together. Okay. So, before going to the next one, let me also clarify the last point that I made that is uh, in the case of BF 3, we saw that C 3 and C 2 they are not coinciding, <coughs> but in certain molecules you can have uh, you know more than one uh, more than one uh, uh, proper axis of symmetry coinciding together. Okay. So, for example, you can have uh, let us take this particular molecule benzene here. Okay. So, we have seen that there is an axis about which you can give a 60 degree rotation and uh, uh, you can have a C 6 axis. Now, for every C 6 turn this hydrogen goes here, this hydrogen goes here. So, you give a, give a 60 degree uh, movement here. Now, if, if you want you can have an axis here and you can rotate in such a way that this h comes here that is I can have an 180 degree rotation right. So, this 180 degree rotation about this axis without going through this. So, directly you rotate and bring it here do not stop here. So, this is a C 2 axis right. So, C 2 and C 6 they are about the same axis ok. So, which is different from B 3, but again here this is not all you can have many other rotational axis. For example, what you can see here that is about this you have a C 6 axis, you have C 2 axis ok and <coughs> you can come from here to here directly and then from here to here and here to here by uh, 120 degree rotation. So, thereby uh, you have uh, C 3 axis. So, all this C 6, C 2, C 3 they you know coincide on each other ok. They are about the same uh, uh, physical axis if you can imagine one here, but there are other axis like if you connect this hydrogen to this hydrogen you find a symmetry axis here about which if you give a rotation of 180 degrees you will find an you know identical structure because this will come here and this will go here. So, it is just a flipping. So, similarly this will do the same job this will also do the same job ok and if I can imagine an axis like this, this will also do the same job ok. So, I can have six different C 2 axis which are lying on the plane of the molecule not coinciding with this 6 C 6 or C 3 or C 2 and this C 2 is different than the C 2s that I just showed you ok. Now, let us move on to the next symmetry element which is known as 
a plane of symmetry. Okay. So, uh, what is this uh, plane of symmetry operation? Okay. So, you imagine any object or any space, uh, if you take this x y z coordinate and you, you know reflect it about a plane and if you get an identical structure that is having coordinate minus x minus y minus z. Okay. Then you uh, get a equivalent and uh, you get a rather uh, indistinguishable structure by this reflection. So, you are doing a reflection about a plane and you are getting indistinguishable structure and this plane is a, is a symmetry plane okay. and uh, this symmetry operation is called a uh, plane of symmetry okay. uh, or also sometimes called reflection operation. Okay. Now, this reflection operation is uh, <coughs> or the mirror planes, they are denoted by uh, a symbol sigma. Okay. So, all the plane of symmetries are denoted by the symbol sigma. Now, there can be a different type of sigmas. So, you can see that uh, we have something special called sigma h, sigma subscript h. So, sigma h is a, a mirror plane, which is perpendicular to the principal axis of rotation. Okay. Now, you also have something called sigma v. Sigma v is also mirror plane, but this particular mirror plane uh, has a uh, as a particular characteristics, which says that this particular mirror plane will contain principal axis of rotation. There is another type of mirror plane, which is known as sigma d. So, sigma d is a mirror plane that bisects the dihedral angle made by the principal axis of rotation and two adjacent C 2 axis. Uh, uh, here one note is uh, that this two is actually a subscript. Okay. So, this mirror plane bisects the dihedral angle made by the principal axis of rotation and two adjacent C 2 axis, which are perpendicular to the principal rotation axis. So, you can see that whatever be the name sigma v, sigma d or sigma h, their functions are same. Okay. So, this subscripts v, d and h just are used to separ separate uh, uh, different uh, you know planes of symmetries, but their jobs are same. Okay, so, uh, in the uh, following class, we will uh, talk about uh, more uh, about this uh, mirror planes and we will cite some examples and uh, go to the other kind of symmetry elements and symmetry operations. Okay, so, see you again in the next class. Thank you very much.